Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza, and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza, where Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, and unto Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's people shout a good hearty, amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, amen. We have a lot to teach you this morning. We're talking about biblical concepts concerning prayer. Amen. And so grab your Bible, grab something to write with, grab your iPad, grab your smartphone. Amen. And go to a Bible app right now. Amen. We're going to get into the word and uh, we're going to believe God together for the best time that we've had in his word and in his presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let's pray. Let's believe God together in Jesus mighty name. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you, Father. Lord, we want to thank you this morning, Father. We declare your glory in this place right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to this telecast right now. We say come right now. Come, Holy Spirit, and manifest your glory Manifest your goodness, manifest your mercy, manifest your loving kindness, manifest, Father, Lord, whatever your precious people need, be that to them right now. Be the healer right now. Be the deliverer right now. Be the baptizer right now. Be the provider right now. Be the shepherd right now. Hallelujah. Be the comforter right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I thank you right now for your precious, holy anointing that is being poured out in a great measure into this region right now. In Jesus' name. We call this region blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the blessing of Abraham be released right now into this region right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. Lord, turn this region right now into a place where the blessing abounds right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May this region see and experience and witness the tangible blessing of Abraham right now in Jesus' mighty name. We say to this entire region, to everyone who is watching right now, we speak into this region and we say to this region, be blessed with the blessing of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, Subdue and take dominion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So be it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We adore you, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Now, Father, in this remaining time, we pray, Father, for utterance to declare to your people what you want them to hear this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We flow with you this morning, Father, and we say thank you for what is going to be accomplished this morning, Father, 
in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to whom honor and glory be forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Amen. All righty. Well, we have been ministering at length concerning biblical concepts, concerning prayer. Amen. And uh, over the course of time, we have looked at Jesus' example of prayer. We have looked at the attitudes in prayer. We have looked at promises to answer prayer. Uh, we also answered the question, when should we pray? Uh, we also answered the question, uh, the last two weeks we answered the question, for whom should we pray for? And now uh, we're going to begin, amen, looking at, concerning the topic, conditions to answered prayer. Conditions to answered prayer. Amen. Conditions to answered prayer. Now, uh, I, there's going to be a statement that's going to appear there on your screen, so I want you to write this statement for the honor and glory of the Lord. Now, watch this. There are certain conditions to being effective in prayer. I'm going to say that again. There are certain conditions to being effective in prayer. I'm going to say that one more time. There are certain conditions to being effective in prayer. In other words, there are certain spiritual laws to being effective in your prayer life. Amen. Uh, God himself said in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, Call on to me and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And then in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Jesus himself said the following, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks will receive, and he who seeks will find. And he who knocks, it shall be opened unto him. So in the, in the two scriptures alone, amen, we have settled that God does answer prayer. Now, having said this, there are certain conditions or certain spiritual laws to being effective in prayer. Now, what are these spiritual laws? What are these conditions, Pastor? Yo? Well, let's go ahead and start. Let's grab our Bible and let's go to St. John chapter 16. St. John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. Look at what Jesus said here for the honor and glory of the Lord. He said these words in St. John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. It reads as follows. This is Jesus speaking. Now, I want to set this up. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is doing the speaking right here. So when Jesus says something here, he speaks the truth the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help him him. Can you shout a good amen, somebody? Amen. So what did Jesus say in John's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 23 and 24? Look at what Jesus said right here in verse 23 of John, chapter 16. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, now notice the next sentence, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, He will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now, notice these two verses again. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, 
that your joy may be full. Now question, here's a question. To whom do we pray according to this verse? To whom do we pray? Answer, we pray to the, to the Heavenly Father. We pray to the Heavenly Father. To whom do we pray to? We pray to the Heavenly Father. Jesus, he said right here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. So to whom do we pray to? We pray to the Heavenly Father. In whose name do we pray? We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Now there's going to be a statement that's going to appear there on your screen. I want you to write this statement down and never forget it. We pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that again. We pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that again. We pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it one more time. We pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. John's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. Now, I want to say something here. Jesus is doing the speaking. Jesus said this. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wrote, He said this. He said this. John wrote it. Jesus said it. John wrote what Jesus said. And Jesus said the following, watch this, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. We are to pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 7. It's going to appear there on your screen. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 7. St. John, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verse 7. Now, look at what Jesus said right here. We're talking about certain conditions to being effective in prayer. What are these conditions? Well, we already looked at John's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. We are to pray to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus declared the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. John, chapter 15, verse 7. Look at what Jesus said right here. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. One more time. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Another condition to being effective in prayer is this. Amen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this in the form of a question. Do you live in Jesus? Do you live in Jesus? That's, that, that, that's the question. Do you live in Jesus? Do you habitually dwell in Jesus? That's what the word abide means. Habitually dwell, permanently dwell. Do you permanently dwell? Do you habitually dwell in Jesus? That's the question. Now, there are some saints of God that will answer and say, yes, Pastor Gil, yes, Pastor Gil, yo, yes, Pastor Gil, I live in Jesus, I live in Jesus, I live in Jesus. Oh, I live in Jesus, I live in Jesus, I live in Jesus. Bless the Lord, I live in Jesus. All right, here's the second question. Does his word live in you? Does his word habitually dwell in you? Does his word permanently dwell in you? Let me ask you this. Does his word have a permanent dwelling in you? Do you permanently dwell in Jesus? 
And does his word have a permanent dwelling in you? Do you abide in Jesus? And does his word abide in you? Now this presents a whole new faith challenge, if you will. Amen. Because Jesus himself said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. I always ask people, you know, when people say, you know, well, Pastor Gill, I'm not getting any of my prayers answered. I'm not getting any of my prayers answered. I'm not getting any of my prayers answered. And they almost come in angry. I'm not getting my prayers answered. I'm not getting my prayers answered. Well, here's going to be the question. And I always like to use these certain conditions. We'll get into more of them. You know, well, do you pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? If they answer affirmative, my next question will be, do you permanently dwell in Jesus Christ? And does his word have a permanent dwelling in you? Now, when I have asked this question, the room goes silent very quickly. <laughs> Amen. You want to know why? Because, of course, we have located uh, why people aren't being effective in their prayer life. If you don't live in Jesus, if, if you don't permanently dwell in Jesus, and if his word doesn't have a permanent dwelling in you, then you won't be able to ask what you will. And of course, it won't be done unto you. The scriptural law, the scriptural law, the, the, the spiritual law to being effective. One of the spiritual laws is right here in John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 7, where Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. If you cannot from your conscience say that you permanently dwell in Jesus, nor does his word have a permanent dwelling in you, then you are not going to be effective in prayer. Amen. Jesus himself said, now I'm, I'm giving you what the Bible says right here. I'm giving you what the Bible says. I'm giving you what the Bible says. And the Bible says in John's gospel, chapter 15, verse seven, he said these words, if ye abide in me, this is what Jesus said. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. This is what Jesus said. So, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So the first condition to being effective in prayer, it, 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 the, the first condition to being effective in prayer, number one is this, John's gospel chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. We are to pray to the heavenly father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Condition number two, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, let's go to Mark chapter 11. Let's see something here for the honor and glory of the Lord. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Now, Jesus is doing the speaking right here. So Jesus declares the following from his very own lips in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now notice what Jesus said. He gave four steps to answer prayer right here. Watch this. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. What is it that you desire? Do you know that you are supposed to desire it? Amen. What things soever you desire. When you pray. So number two, you got to pray. Number one, what is it that you desire? Desire it. If it's in the word, then desire it. If it's healing that you desire, if it's peace that you desire, if it's joy that you desire, if it's patience that you desire, if it's gentleness 
that you desire. Amen. Uh, to be a good person, to have goodness in, in, in your character. Amen. If it's provision that you desire. Amen. You know, what things soever ye desire. This is Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Jesus said uh, again right here. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them. This is very key right here. Believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. Now, number four, and ye shall have them. Amen. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Notice the order right here. What things soever, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, there will be people that will say, well, Pastor Gill, in order for me to believe it, I want to have it first. That, that's not what Jesus said right here. He said, what things soever you desire. That's number one. What things soever you desire. When you pray, you pray. And then number three, believe that you receive them. You got, you got to believe that you receive first. And when you do, then you will have it. Amen. So, Number one, we're to pray to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, Jesus said that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Number three, Jesus himself said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, 1 John chapter 5. Let's go to 1 John, the first epistle of John. Amen. We trust you're being blessed this morning. Amen. We're talking about certain spiritual laws to being effective in prayer. We're talking about certain conditions to being effective in prayer. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Look at what the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle John to write under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to the entire church world in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Look at what it says here. Look at what John wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Verse 14 of 1 John chapter 5. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything, now notice the next sentence, according to His will, He heareth us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now notice very carefully what John wrote here. He said, and this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, now watch this, watch this. According to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know, we know, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Write this statement down and never forget. Never forget this statement. Never forget the statement that I'm going to say to you right now. Write this down and never forget this. It's going to appear there on your screen. The Word of God is the will of God. The will of God is the Word of God. I'm going to say that again. The Word of God is the will of God. The will of God is the Word of God. I'm going to say that one more time. The Word of God is the will of God. The will of God is the Word of God. If you want to find out what God's perfect will is concerning life and concerning you, watch this. This is, this is right here. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. The Word of God, the Word of God is the will of God. The will of God is the Word of God. This is God's will for all time for mankind. This is God's perfect will right here. The Word of God is the will of God. 
The will of God is the word of God. John said this, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, watch this, according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Somebody just found out what the will of God is, and it's right here, right here. The word of God is the will of God. The will of God is the word of God. This is the will of God right here from Genesis to, 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 from Genesis to Revelation. Right here is the will of God. Is healing the will of God? Huh. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. This is the will of God right now. This is the will of God. Amen. Is it the will of God for all of my needs to be met? Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Is it God's will for me to have peace? Jesus said in John's gospel chapter 14, My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, but as I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Is it God's will for me to have peace? Well, Psalms 23, verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. I'm telling you right now, the perfect will of God is right here. Right here. And if you search the will of God concerning your situation, you will have God's promise. You will have God's answer. You will have God's provision. Amen. Because it's His will. It's His will. The Word of God is the will of God. And the will of God is the Word of God. Can you shout a good amen, somebody? Amen. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Amen.